Hello there, my name is Mr. Smart Anki, and welcome to the first let's play I'm going to do on Total War Shogun 2, Fall of the Samurai. Not regular Shogun 2, because as you are mostly, most likely well aware of, I have done plenty of those. Anyway, so um, normally I do my let's plays on Legendary, but um, I have decided my first one for this one is going to be hard. I'll explain why. So the most requested thing for me on my channel to do is, or has been for a long time, uh, Fall of the Samurai on Shogun 2. Um, I, I get requests all the time, even still now. Um, so I figured I may as well get it started now. Um, obviously the whole idea is to do a legendary campaign on every single uh, faction in Shogun 2 and Fall of Samurai and Rise of Samurai. Um, but I, I just I haven't played Fall of the Samurai much at all. I play all the Shogun 2, I know how Rise of the Samurai works, but Fall of the Samurai I'm honestly... I don't know much about. So I figured instead of learning the game myself, I may as well learn it, um, well I mean I'm still going to learn it myself, but instead of learning it by myself, I may as well uh, record it and uh, just do a let's play on it. Um, me learning Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I've given a very little thought to what clan I'm going to play as, but I think it's going to be the Satsuma. So we've got the Shogunate and the Imperial. Um, like, there's ten factions total, you have a choice between the two, the Shogunates and the Imperial faction factions. Um, as far as I understand it, the Shogunate factions basically stay want to stay loyal to the Shogun. They get uh, sh yeah, Shogunate units, uh, bows and katanas and, and the like. Whereas the Imperial units get more advanced um, units, the guns and uh, things of that nature. So I'm personally more of a, a fan of the Shogunate stuff, but um, I'm assuming they're going to be more difficult as well. So, I'm guessing Imperial is going to be a nice one to start with, um, and Satsuma is one of the easier ones as well. They start with two provinces, their initial challenge is easy, and they have a nice, the, the starting position basically the same as the Shimazu in the original game, and then they get the extra province here as well. Um, so yeah, we're playing on uh, hard, it's still going to be a domination campaign. Um, I may as well turn that on, I suppose, but I guess I also don't really have to. Um, yeah, fuck it, we'll just leave leave it off for now. Um, so, yeah, Satsuma. Uh, they have the Emperor's Ambition. They have plus 5% reduction to administration costs, minus 10% uh, to the cost of foreign veteran agent... Uh, sorry, uh, veteran actions. They have plus 50% increase to the General's Radius of Influence, and they begin with two provinces. So... Sorry, I'm also coughing, so if there's a cut every once in a while, it's probably me coughing. Um, so, um, anyway, I feel like I should also mention Attila was just released two days ago. Um, I played it, I somewhat enjoyed the co-op, hated the single player. Um, I'll probably make a video on this at some point, but I feel it necessary to tell you guys now that I'm probably not going to do any single player let's plays on it at all. Um, because I think it's horrible. But well, it's not horrible, it's just it's got all of the same features as Rome 2, and I just don't like him. I can't get used to him, and I will never like him. Um, which means that maybe all, all future Total War games are going to be unlike, uh, unliked by me, because it's just it's got stuff in it that I don't like. But I'll go over that in a different video. This is uh, Follow the Samurai. So, anyway, like I said, completely unexperienced with this, uh, this game. But uh, the only way we're going to find out how it, work, how it works is if we're going to play it, so let's do it. After the Sengoku Jidai, peace reigned for 200 years. In Kyoto, the Emperor continued as divine head of state. But real power was held by the Tokugawa Shogunate. For two centuries, they ruled with absolute authority. Japan prospered. The people were content. In 1853, American warships changed everything. The Shogun abandoned his people and signed the Treaty of Peace and Amity. The gates to Japan were open. Trade was established, but the agreements favor the Western powers. The economy faltered, and the people suffered. In 
In 1863, the emperor overruled the shogun. An imperial decree ordered the expulsion of all Western powers. No longer would Japan be westernized. The time had come to strike back. Western powers gave the answer. Prepare to run out the guns. On my command, fire! The treacherous Westerners brought death to our people. The Shogun no longer commanded respect or loyalty. Imperial rule had to be restored. To strengthen our position, the Emperor made peace with the British. We will study their ways and discover their secrets. Only then can we destroy the Shogun and return honor to Japan. The Emperor must be victorious. Satsuma Domain, our family, the Shimizu, has ruled these lands since the time of the first Minamoto Shogun ever loyal to Japan and her people. But the Tokugawa and their lackeys have failed us, allowing themselves to be manipulated by Western powers. For the good of all, power must be returned to the Emperor. Our first priority should be to ally with domains who share our beliefs. There is little support for the shogunate here in Kyushu, but opposition is inevitable, and resistance must be met with force. Once the situation on Kyushu is under control, we must support our allies on the mainland. Imperial control of Kyoto and Edo will be vital if we are to break the shogun's wicked grip on the land. When full-scale war finally erupts between Imperial and Shogunate forces, the people of Satsuma will be at the vanguard, leading Japan into a bright and glorious future. Long live the Emperor. All right, mission issued. Increase your clan's development level. And we get inspired endeavors plus 50% wealth generated by buildings across all provinces. Ooh, are, are we going to get a if our daimyo is to become shogun? Or, or the equivalent. Is a no. Between the forces it's the same the lady shogun. and a different thing, but uh, I mean, obviously, no, if our daimyo is to become shogun, since we cannot become shogun anymore. Okay, so this is my first thing that I just enjoy about Shogun 2 compared to yes, Attila. Yes. In Attila, you basically start with a full stack, and every single battle after that is at least one full stack versus another full stack, and usually it's like more than that, which I fucking hate. So. That's just one thing that's so much better about Shogun 2. Right, so I, I don't know where to start, really. Um, I guess we'll have a quick look at our, our clan and all that. We're currently at War of the Nobelka, um, who are apparently just sitting right here. We've got Hyuga. Four units in there, uh, three standing outside, and then they've got a town. And the town gives one spear levy garrison. However, the stronghold gives another one, um, and I'm assuming that, that yeah, that's a stronghold too. So they got two units, although I think indicates three. So maybe the cadet school gives something as well. Do I have a cadet school I can have a look at? No. 
Uh, cadet school. Yeah, one garrison infantry. So, okay, they got seven units basically sitting in their town and three outside. But that's another thing about this game. You can siege people out. Whereas in Attila, you have to wait about 13 turns if you want to siege someone out, which is fucking horrendous. Anyway, um, I'm not going to talk about Attila. I don't know why I'm talking about Attila now. So let's have a look at our family. We've got a 47-year-old daimyo um, who just has plus one morale for all units under this man's command. Then we have the daimyo's son, 24-year-old. He's got nothing about him. And we have a regular general who uh, also doesn't have anything about him. He is 36 year old, uh, years old. So this is different as well. You've got no longer got the four commissions that you can um, put on any generals whenever you feel like. In this game, I think the way it works is every time you um, go up one rank in the uh, in this uh, meter, so there's like four ranks or something until the realm divide or whatever this, this is at the end. Um, every time you gain one rank, you gain one slot or one ability or yeah, one level up basically, or one, one of these um, these four. So you gain that one, then you gain that one, that one, etc. So we can't do anything with that now, but um, yeah, we will be able to use that in the future. We can also convert our alliance, so we become uh, we can become a shogunate clan if we want to. Um, basically, like converting to Christianity, I guess. So we got some diplomacy. Um, I did notice there's a, a clan over here that looks like a nice target to take out right away. They are... Is that pro-shogunate? No, pro-emperor, I'm guessing, because we're pro-emperor and we have the same um, uh, symbol. I'm assuming it works the same as it does in Rise of the Samurai. Um, or, well, the same as religion as well, but Rise of the Samurai is more obvious. Like, the allegiance, um, you have, like, a, yeah, a percentage meter in every town. And some of them start fully... Yeah, this guy's pro-shogun, so they have like 60% oh, pro-shogun, 40% pro-emperor. So we do want to take this as soon as possible before it becomes too pro-emperor. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of converting to do and such. Um, but I think the more modern your town is, maybe the f faster it, um, it becomes yours or something. Uh, I don't know exactly. Then there's the navies. We've got naval bombardment now. Uh, bombardments even. We can... Um, if the navy... Uh, sorry, you got a ring around each navy, and if they're um, if there's something in their range, they can shoot at it, and they can also help you out in uh, battles, which is very useful. I'm assuming moving ships uh, or moving units on ships is the same as it was in a previous game. So I'm gonna um, just assume that. Um, right. So before we go into units and all that, so we do have some of the problems. We can trade the saga. So let's see if we can uh, start that. Oh well, no, it's not acceptable. I will listen to your words for a time. Okay. Yeah. I don't really want any alliances, to be honest. Uh, we cannot trade with the, these people. But Oh, they're my vassal. Oh, well, in that case, I guess we won't be taking them out. I guess that's why we start with four uh, honor. Yep. Okay, well, um, it's kind of a bummer. Because that's a nice little province to take out right away. So there are a, f there are a few more provinces in this game. I mean, there's this place over here as well, Goto, or Goto. <laughs> Um, and then there's this place right here, a little island, and then you've got this entire uh, entire place up here, which is another three or four provinces or so, or five maybe even. Looks pretty big actually. Um, and besides that, the rest I think is mostly the same. I don't know if exactly every province is in the right in the same place as it was before, but probably um, generally. Okay, so then there's the uh, the tech tree, and this is where the militarization. Or the clan development comes in uh, into play. Oh, it is modernization, actually, not modern, whatever I just said. Um, so, you can see here, or if your clan development's level 1, you get minus 20% of the recruitment cost of traditional units, which is not really what we want, because we want the more um, uh, imperial units, uh, whatever, the, the later units. Uh, we've got plus 2 morale for the traditional units, and plus 2 experience for all traditional units, and this goes down every time. But you do lose happiness from modernization, so even though we're an imperial clan, I guess we still get the unhappiness. Um, but you start getting more research rate, and at this one, all general bodyguard uh, units have been upgraded to use revolvers. And then with this one, you just get 50% to the research rate, but you have minus three happiness from modernization. So that's that's that sounds like a pretty big deal. Although I'm guessing it's easier to counteract the unhappiness by upgrading things like this. This gives an extra two repression. This one doesn't, but it does give modernization. Let's have a look at all the um, the things. 
Oh yeah, it actually gives um, minus happiness for modernization. Okay. Uh, but it, okay, these unlock the additional construction slots and also bonus tax rate. It seems to be. Um, yeah, that seems to be the the only thing with this and and unhappiness. Oh, and and right, yeah, and plus modernization, uh, clan development. Um, and this one, I think, upgrades upgrades the actual town. It, is, it also increases your equipment capacity. It seems to do. Um, yeah, and more repression and more increase in resistance to naval bombardment. As I said, this is going to be a complete learning experience. You might all know this already, but I'm just going through it anyway. Um, and yeah, usually when I do learn how game works by myself, I'm just talking to myself, explaining everything. Because if I just read stuff, then it doesn't st it doesn't usually stick. Whereas when I say it to myself, it sticks more. Um, which might sound weird, but whatever. Anyway, so it seems more uh, logical to upgrade this for happiness reasons, and this if you really want to make buildings there. So we still have an armorer here, or a blacksmith, which gives us armor and accuracy. Okay, don't know exactly what kind of other things there are though. I'm assuming there's still going to be a craftsworks in Boozen, so then we can check out what the craftsworks does, because this gives um, this gives uh, accuracy. So I wonder what the craftsworks does uh, if it gives something else. That might be something to keep an eye out um, on, because if we are going to, um, like, if we're going to start having proper armies, I need to know what kind of upgrades I want on all those armies. Okay, um, right, so what else have we got then? So we've got a police station, which allows us to make an Ishin Shishi, but I'm guessing this is, this is a foreign veteran. I'm guessing that's one of the, uh, it's a Seth Patrick. I don't know what he can do. He can challenge the single combat, the Daimyo. Oh, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. You can harass the army, which inflicts casualties and demoralizes the units. Okay, it's sort of like a monk action, but also inflicts casualties. You can sabotage the okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, it makes sense. And uh, right, can we sabotage armies with him as well? No. So there's no sabotaging armies, at least not for this particular guy. He's a very um, he's he's like a ninja basically with challenging the single combat. I do like that though, that because he seems to be very proficient at that. Um, sabotaging building, yeah, that's okay. I don't think he unlocks any more skills or anything for this, I'm assuming. Um, it's the way that it works in Attila. So, let's have a look. So, we can unlock Ishin Shin sh something. Ishin Shinshi and Shinzengumi. But I think the Shinzengumi are for the other faction, or for the um, Shogunate faction. So, let's have a look at the uh, characters. Is it characters, or I think it might be. Yeah, right, so Ishin Shinzi. Um, Russell Power from Shogunate, yada yada. They can rally a population, persuade an enemy army to support the Emperor. Oh, that's like a bribe, I guess? Oh, that looks really weird. Oh, there we go. Um, oh, this is really weird the way it's set up. Fuck it. I, I'm, I'm sure I'll understand. Instead of Imperial Fervor, I'm not sure what that does. Oh, that's in front of So it's like a morale boost. Um, Rally a population probably makes towns happy or something. Insert revolt uh, or insight revolt makes sense. Assassinate general makes sense. Uh, in friendly settlements, ancient improved pro imperial allegiance. Any act effect effect them as a counter spying is simply better presence. Okay, so you put them in a town. The town becomes either happy or something, or uh, oh no, they probably it's like a monk converting, I guess. Uh, they're recruited via the propaganda building chain. Okay, that doesn't matter. Um, especially effective against shinobi and foreign veterans. Okay. That's the um, rock, paper, scissors thing still. Do we get Shinobi as well? Uh, traditional military building. It's okay, so they're made for the traditional build military building chain, which is not something we'd be making. But I guess we have the foreign veteran as our assassin or Shinobi. Then there's the Geisha, who I seem to remember was fucking terrible, but I don't actually know. Oh yeah, they uh, improve town growth, which is good. It's, li it's like the Metsuke, but not quite the same. She doesn't influence the money directly that comes in. She doesn't improve the tax rate, but over time she makes towns worth more. Um, this is the anti-shogunate uh, unit. Or oh, actually, no, wait. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, he's the shogunate unit, so I can't make him. Um, and we, because we have the foreign veteran in, uh, instead of him, so I assume we can still make the shinobi, the Ish Ishin Ishin Shinshi, and the Geisha as well. Um, 
Okay. They are vulnerable to shinobi and exceptionally dangerous to foreign veterans. So they're good against foreign veterans. I want to see sort of know who everyone's good against. These guys are vulnerable to Shinjigumi and Ishin Shinji. Uh, and are exceptionally dangerous to the Geisha. Okay. And the foreign veteran. Both uh, foreign veterans are both vulnerable to Geisha and unable to act against them. Okay, interesting. Um... I guess, I don't know what they're good against. They're probably good against anything, or decent against anything, but good against ninjas. Okay, um, okay. so we got agent actions out of the way, or agents out of the way for now. So th that means we can actually make, yeah, we can make it Ishin Shinji right now. I'll probably want to do that at some point. Another thing, I don't know if there's still schools, because if there is, then I think there's one of them in... Oh, this looks like another Craftsworks right there, because that looks like the same symbol as that one. I think there's a school in one of these provinces or at least an original game it might not be in this one though because this school might not be a thing anymore uh there's iron right here which is great okay yeah this first turn this first episode the first few episodes are going to take very long just prepare for that i'm very sorry but i'm uh, i've got i got a feeling that you guys are going to enjoy it regardless um so we got regular farms that make sense and we got the ports there's no roads I think the way the road system works is, um, there's not like a road thing here, is there? Because I think the way the road system works is, um, it only happens in certain provinces that have like a railroad. I think there's a few over here, like this is a railroad right here. So I think if you upgrade the railroad in those provinces, then you can use the railroad to move very quickly between provinces. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how it works, I've never seen it, but I, I think that's a thing. So I'm guessing the, the roads are just going to be the same everywhere, except for in those provinces. They're just like fully upgraded roads already. I guess that's how it works. That's nice, it means we don't have to worry about making or um, buying roads, basically. I think buildings are quite expensive, though. You can see the first upgrade for the iron or the uh, blacksmith is already 4k, whereas in the main game, I think the highest upgrade costs like 3400 or something. And that, like that's the highest upgrade. Um, so we got the blacksmith. We can make that into ironworks or the armor. Wait. Oh, sorry. I'm already on that ironworks. Right. And the ironworks you can make into the armor or the other one. So this gives ten accuracy and four armor. And then the other one gives uh, twenty accuracy and two armor. So you, yeah, it's ten armor or two accuracy. Uh, sorry, two armor or ten accuracy. If it was 10 armor or 2 accuracy, I don't know what the hell I'd be going with. Um, right, so, yeah, 10 accuracy or 2 armor. Interesting, but the first upgrade is just a plain uh, good one. Okay, so many things to upgrade. I don't know what I would want to do. I'm guessing I'd want to build this here at some point, because this is going to be a main province that we're going to be making units in, because we do have the ironworks. I'd want to know what kind of buildings um, I can get stuff from. So the cannon range, this is a good one. I seem to remember like, wooden cannons were absolutely horrendous. They didn't do any damage, they were very inaccurate, and you can move. Which is super bad, so I probably don't want to make, make them. But the upgrade is the field artillery school, which allows you to make parrot guns, which have wheels. So I'm assuming they can move. And they have shrapnel shots, which sounds pretty cool as well. Um, and of course, this is the game that introduced the um, being able to control your own cannons. I don't know if that's only with a Gatling gun or from all cannons, but... Um, then the Armstrong gun and the Arsenal, which gives the Gatling guns. So that's pretty cool. That's definitely something I'd probably want to get into at some point. I should also actually have a quick look at um, buildings. Because I said about... Uh, what's the training? Oh, the training camp is... is Okay, cool. Right, we want to get one of those as well. It doesn't look like we act, have to get any... Oh yeah, we do actually. We need the domain and the realm for that, which is... Oh, it disappeared because I took too long. <laughs> um, the main in the realm is down there. Okay, so that's that's gonna take a little bit before we reach it. Anyway, um, right. So I was just having a look at buildings. I wanted to have a look at um, the blacksmith, but like other buildings. So, um, like the the one uh, that normally gives accur uh, accuracy is the clay pits. Is probably one of them. Um, Okay, time growth and stuff. I don't really care about these sort of things. No, oh, minus 5% of the cost of modern units in this province, but I'd still rather have armor and such. Buddhist shrine. Minus the modernization. Makes sense. Oh, that's that's interesting. 
Oh, and they give charge burn as well. So these are really good for the shogunate. I probably want to make my shogunate units in uh, a place that I just find extra charge. Just get in there and murder stuff. Mardar. Um, okay, so this is the railway station. Enables railways. Cool. Uh, worm farm. Nah. It's quite a few of these. Smuggler's Cove. Okay. And the tea plantation. So I don't think there's many buildings that actually give boosts to units besides the Buddhist shrine and the blacksmith. That's cool. That's easy to keep track of and not too many buildings I'd want to make different kinds of units in. Like I showed you two, I always have to find a place for my archers to build or a place for my uh, melee units to build in this place. I can make them all in the same place. Okay. Now... I'm probably going to make an age and then get rid of this building, but we still have a few more buildings to have a look at. So we got the cannon range, we, the inn is, yeah, it's the geisha place, but you can make it into a gambling den and a market. Um, which I don't know exactly, oh crap, I should have done that. Don't know exactly what the difference is, looks like more wealth, but happiness maybe. That's fine, we'll, also, we'll have a look at that all later. Okay, so this is the, the main um, infantry our main uh, uh, unit recruitment place, uh, or unit recruitment thingamabob that we want. Uh, the cadet school, which allows us to make saber cav and line infantry. Uh, saber cav kind of pointless it seems because you're ranged. I think um, like for the other factions you'd have Yarikachi or Yariki. Yari yeah, I think Yarikachi is the samurai. Yeah, and Ki is the cavalry. Um, so yeah, I guess the saber probably be weak against them actually and anyway, then we got the police station we already have one of those um increase the display of influence okay that's interesting as well so it's, it's like a monk place too uh or like a buddhist temple um the cottage industry so that's just pure money i think uh, then we got this which we can improve into five different buildings which get different stats uh matchlock tower so this is just like a if we want to improve a castle i probably never go for this i mean it sounds very good because you can actually upgrade this to have gutling gun towers and like, gun batteries and shit which is pretty crazy. However, um, it's never really necessary, uh, I feel. And then there's the traditional dojo, which we probably will not be m making at all because it minus this modernization as well. We're going to be going for fully modern armies, which is really weird. This game is is uh, this is why I am, I'm so unfamiliar with the Fall of the Samurai. Uh, just overall gun units. This, this is why I never played Empire much either. Is because I. I don't know the strategies. I might call myself a mastermind in regular Shogun 2 and I'd call myself a noob in this game because I don't know how sh stuff works. Because I feel like if you have enough cav, you're going to get through those gun, ch like the first few volleys and then you start charging stuff and you're going to murder stuff because they're like terrible in melee, at least you'd think they'd be. So I don't know what the right compensation for armies is, so um, yeah, I, I just don't know exactly how that's going to work. Do I want a full on gun units or do I want a few cav in there do I want a few melee units as well to support them in case I get charged what, like what do I want I don't know it doesn't really matter for the beginning few episodes because we're still going to be building armies like reg or as we go anyway but anyway I need to have a quick look at uh, happiness in these towns so this place is free it's got two units in there as well and this place is two and it's got two units in here so it's actually yeah if I move these units out they're already unhappy basically um, so I think we're gonna make that agent for sure, just so I can get rid of the building, because we don't want that building there anymore. So we're gonna get rid of the police station. Uh, we can't get rid of this, because this is like, yeah, it's part of the, it's basically, yeah, these two are like always gonna be the same. Um, so we can currently make levy infantry, which I think are absolutely horrendous, so we probably wouldn't bother too much of those. We, um... For you, my lord. We have one levy infantry, we have one line infantry. So these are the first units we're going to be able to make, the line infantry. Um, also, unit costs are very different from showing two, like spear levy, they are 84. Uh, Yarikachi are basically, yeah, they're samurai units that are next up from them, and they only cost like 30 more upkeep or so. Like, it's it's not a big enough difference to justify not going for them, so you always want to go for the samurai units, basically. Um, don't know how it, how it works for the gun units, but I'm, I'd imagine it'd be similar. Um, anyway, so yeah, we probably don't want to make too many levy infantry. Uh, I'm guessing we're just going to gather up all of our forces and start going towards Hyuga right away. Good day to you, sir. Uh, we'll shove him in the army, I'm guessing. I think that's what we'll start doing right away. 
Sadly, this guy won't be able to reach as far. Um, I don't know if we can actually take them on right away, because we have a total of seven, nine units. I'm going to put him in the army. Train troops. Getting experience outside of battle. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> Uh, next turn though, we're because I'm gonna make a few more units. Sadly, I'm making two in this town, um, so it'll take them a little bit longer to move over. So these are traditional units, I'm assuming, but eh, for now it doesn't really matter. Um, we have our navy as well, which I guess we'll start moving around as well, and then we can start attacking them. Or maybe I'm gonna make a few more navy ships as well, or um, navy ships. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. All right, so we have a port here. Which is, oh, right, so it's the second level. Now, this is another thing. I I hate Navy, as you, I'm sure you're well aware of, and I have no idea how the naval system in this game works compared to the last, because it seems, I mean, this unit's 3.5k to make. Is that like a ridiculously good ship or something? I mean, how much does it cost to upkeep? Uh, 462. That's basically all of our income. So currently we have two gun. No, we have a gunboat and a wooden corvette. Like stats, I don't know. I don't know what stuff means. You know, I just I'm very unfamiliar with this. Uh, it looks like we don't really have that much money, so I probably don't want to make too many ships right now. So I guess we'll just have to deal with the two. Hope that they are good to go at whatever they have. But yeah, if I can get there next turn, I can start bombarding the city and stuff. So let's do that. Um, so we have a decent bit of money left though, we can start making buildings. So in Osumi, this is uh, meager soil, which is also pretty poor. Uh, we have the port we, or a harbor we could upgrade, but I don't know exactly what I would do. Okay, so it gives us one more possible trade route, and it gives us some uh, per turn to town growth, improves our es uh, export capacity. Right, okay, well for now I think that's not too important. The farms, I don't know how important they are to upgrade. They don't give food. There's no more food in this game. Food is not an issue anymore. So it's mostly about wealth. Um, so I'm guessing we just want to build a building here. And, I, and we may want to upgrade this too. Although that will make us unhappy right away. Um, which is problematic. And the only reason why it's plus one right now is because of this place, which is going to go away. So... Immediately, we're gonna become very unhappy here. How much do these buildings actually cost? Because I'm oh, they're actually relatively cheap to make the regular buildings. So here, I guess I w I would want something that isn't um isn't like a recruitment uh thing. So I guess well, we don't want this side because it's like money. So we'd probably want uh something that gives us an agent. And since we don't have a geisha yet, I think that would be the best idea. How do we get the um How do we get the foreign dude? Cuz I got one of them, but how do I get them? Do I need to make Okay, so if I want to get shinobis, I do have to get a traditional dojo. So I probably do want to make these at some point. Um But yeah, how does one get the veteran doodazzle? Let's see. At your command. Um Right, this doesn't tell me anything. Characters, Fault of Samurai, Foreign Veteran, um, acquires the military port. Ah, okay, of course. They are like imported. Makes sense. It does. Um, okay, can we. Oh, can we make them here? Or do we. Is, uh, it has to be a higher port, doesn't it? So it has to be a. Yeah, military port, right. Okay, um, but we already have one. Do I have to have five military ports to be able to make five agents, or do I just have to have one and I can make five? That would not be the same as Shogun 2 if that's the case. But it also seems pretty crazy to have five military ports. Um, but, I don't know. Either way, it seems that we are not out of money at all, because we still need to make this building. So, like I said, we don't have a geisha yet, so I think making a geisha is probably the best idea. Unless there's something else that I could do. Uh, police station is probably alright as well because it also spreads influence but the thing is we already had one so 
and to make a new one right away seems kind of weird. So I think I'll make a um, an inn, so we can have a geisha. Plus it gives us one happiness as well, which is always good. Um, okay, so we're making three units. Sadly, the, the ones I'm making here are going to take two turns to get there. Or to here, basically, and then we still have to get over, over there, so... Not sure when we're actually going to do the attack. Hopefully there will be a fight in this first episode. Now we still have to clan, do the clan development. So in order to get the monetization up, or in order to get to the second level, we have to get our monetization up. So we need to make sure we get the monetization up before we finish all these things. Um, this gives us monetization. Uh, also minus 5% recruitment costs, and it enables the barracks, which I guess is the next level up from um, what we want. She enables Banzai, enables fire arrows. So this is like, seems like more of a uh, um, a uh, um, shogunate thing to do. Fire arrows, like you're not going to use fire arrows if you don't have any bows. Banzai, same thing if you don't have any, uh, infantry. Enables recruitment and punishment of much like Kashi. I remember, seem to remember they were quite bad. Uh, shipyard, this is good though, so we probably need to get that at some point. Epic architecture is funny because they like they put this as one of the first thing, well, one the, the first thing come uh, together with that one, and it's actually the last thing in the regular sugar two tree, on the civil side, or the um whatever it's called. Minus ten percent of the cost of constructing settlements across all provinces. Oh, and plus one clan what happiness. I think we could do with that. Um, modernization and diplomatic relations and administration cost reduction and wealth generated by all farms. I'll probably go for that first. That sounds pretty good. All right. Um, although I've, this, this is really good as well, but we we need to get this for sure, and then maybe switch over to that or something. Um, finance of a quick look see. We are currently trading with them. We're getting eighty two. Who are they anyway? The Kuna something something. Wait, we can. Are we trading through C? No, we're not. So that means that's them. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're not trading with our ally. It seems there's uh, probably. Oh, I wonder what this means. Can I go there and like we go to the port, of, or is that what, the, uh, what we're trading? I guess that was sort of trade lines are going to. Um, I don't know if there's like still things all across the place. I guess not. Like uh, imported, um, what do you call them? Like in uh, resources. I guess not, because I don't see any. Uh, anyway, objective. So develop our potential. Don't know what else I'd really want to see, but like I said, this is all new to me. Okay, so the first turn only took about 30 minutes, and then, I mean, we're even further in the video, but that's all the cutscenes and shit, and me talking beforehand as well, so they didn't want to trade. What? Nope. Alright, well, I guess it's time to move on. Alright, and there's like 24 turns in this game, isn't there? So we might want to wait until winter's over anyway before we go on the attack against Hyuga and whatever clan they are controlling there. I honestly, I have no clue when it comes to clan names yet. What do you wish of me? Okay, so we got this fellow now, the Inch Ishin Shishi. So he can do inciting revolts, right? We knew that. And I guess what can you do in armies? Instill fervor. Troops of fervor increase the bonus that they receive when charging into melee combat. Oh, interesting. Not necessarily that good for us, but not bad. Um, you go in there, and then you can actually reach the army. Ha ha. Yes, my lord. Look at that. At your command. You guys keep moving through. Okay, so our income's down to 501 already. So we have six of these fellas, two gun units, uh, one Yarikachi, and three generals. Three generals? Okay, so we start with. That's, yeah, I didn't actually realize, but that's fine, I suppose. Um, this guy's got six loyalty. Yeah, not bad. Not too shabby. Sorry. Um, okay, so we got 1800 bucks. Yeah, our income is so bad. I do want to get the cadet school here, though, so let's start working on that, and then we'll leave it for now. So that will allow us to make Saber Cav and Line Infantry. No idea how much they're going to cost, though. Uh, you guys go to the border. Actually, can I hide? Yeah, can I hide right there. So next turn we'll hide right there. Maybe they'll come over and we can kill them, and then we'll move back. Saga, you changed your mind yet? Oh, they did. Well, I will listen to your words for a time. Do not waste this chance I give to you. Will you pay anything for some trade with me? No? Alright, well, I'll just take trade. Uh, take trade, yeah. It's a good start. We need that income right now. Very badly. 
Oh right, I forgot to actually do the naval bombardment, but at least we can see what they've got again. That's uh, definitely something we can beat. And I think in this game, it's funny, like... Oh, capture falling prawns, Hugo, and we get uh, pro-imperial spread. Good. Because it's probably going down now here. Oh wow, that's pretty fast as well. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll take attrition. I think next turn is going to be winter, or uh, spring even, or something. Okay, so I can start bombarding. Actually, I'm going to move right here, so that if I do attack the town soon, then at least I'll be in range. Okay, so we had 24 men. Or, well, we killed 24 men. I want to see, I can now use this guy. Let me just quickly see what he can do against agents. So can, he can assassinate as well, okay. And he can persuade troops, which I guess is... Yeah, it's bribing. Sweet. He can't bribe towns, though. We can incite revolts in towns. No shit. Can I still move here? No. That's a bummer. Well, it's alright. Next turn we're going to go on the attack anyway, I think. Our income's increasing slightly. Um, yeah, that's going to go down quite a bit already. By that and by that. Right, but we're going to get plus one back from the development. But yeah, that seems very tough to keep towns happy. I mean, we'd have to get the fortress already. Which doesn't really do much for us, and it costs 4500 And our income right now is not really allowing me to Ready for pay for things like that. Oh well. For the moment, I mean, I could always make one unit and sit him in there. That's always an option. It seems tougher to keep happiness in towns, I think. As, well, I, I guess that's mostly going to be for the towns that, where you're going to recruit your units, because they're going to get a lot of monetization in those particular towns. What's that? Nothing. Okay. Your orders, my lord. Um. Okay, so next turn we will be able to go on the attack. If I move out now, we'll take one turn of attrition. I don't know if he's making any more units. He's got a total of eight right now. I'll I'll sit in the in the forest for now, and then see if uh, he falls for that. Yeah, be like, hey, there's nothing there. And meanwhile, I'm gonna keep bombarding. Killed seven of the generals, man. The thing is, though, if he does move, then we're not going to have our um, ships in range anymore, so we're not going to have any naval bombardment. Help. Help. Um, so we got one turn until Epic Architecture is done. And also the Cadet School. And then we can start making some units. So I, oh my god, this guy's cost 493 to make. I had not realized that at all. Yes, my lord. That is pretty crazy. Okay, anyway. Oh, by the way, yeah, I, I could have known that they didn't have any ships to protect because they don't have an, a port, so that's, um, that's pretty stupid right there. Let's see if they fall for this. It worked in regular Shogun too, and this is essentially the same game, so... Oh, they're under siege. Not getting attacked right away, though. Looks like that defending army is slightly bigger as well. And we're trading with those people, so... Okay, they didn't fall for it. So we're now working on administrative uh, training. And it's spring, plus one happened. Oh, nice. Well, that'll save us for the moment, at least. So let's start going on the offensive. As you wish, my lord. They now have nine units, so they might make one more. But we should be fine either way, I reckon. So we got our inn and our cadet school. Right, so the cadet school will now allow us to make better units. Oh, god. It costs 1260. It's be nice to have some cav in there right away, though. Charge bonus of only 10. These guys have the same charge bonus. They're line infantry. Why would, I, why would you ever make cap? Well, I mean, you still make cap, but yeah. Um, they have good stamina, though. Even though, like, the regular katana cap don't have good stamina. I guess that, that's because they're armored. I mean, these aren't katana cap. They're saber cap, but you understand what I mean. Uh, so, compare these... Actually, no, we have already knew about these, because we have one of these, Ready don't we? Um, yeah, we have one of those line infantry. Okay, so now the next one would be uh, the barracks, yep, which will allow us to make sharpshooters and revolver calf. But we need arms deals to get that, which is that one. Definitely something that we're going to be working on. But I think I want to get this first, because income is really not that good. Um, maybe he'll come out and attack me now, but I doubt it. Besides that, we really don't have mu that much money to do anything. We could increase the port. 
Um, no, nah, I don't think so. I think there might be more important things to spend our money on. I hope he comes out and attacks me. Oh, he goes into his town. Okay, so now he's definitely going to have a bigger army than us. We, I mean, we're playing on hard for one, and it's still Shogun 2. I still know how to play this game. Clan encounter to Fukuoka. Oh, I also forgot to um, bombard a few times. I hope they're still like allowed to bombard. Oh god, we destroyed that town. I wonder if we're still allowed to bombard them even if we um, already used that in this turn. So let's see diplomacy wise. We met the uh, Fukuoka, but we can't trade with them. Okay, so let's go besiege our town. Hopefully it doesn't take as long as it does in Attila. Oh god, that's not even close to being fair. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sure we'll be fine. Just for honest save. I'm not gonna siege it, I'm gonna siege them out. We do have, yeah, call in naval, naval support. That'll help out a lot. Yeah, we only have 300 men less than them. Not even that, 250 or so. It's just that if we attack them, it, it'll be terrible, but we're not going to. I'm gonna siege them out. It takes four turns. Yeah, that's fine. I suppose I could even use agent actions here. Uh, now I'm not anymore because I'm already in the town, but yeah, I probably could have done something. Maybe try to assassinate a general, although that is pretty damn expensive. Okay, so I can operate the inn to a gambling den or a market. The difference is a little bit of wealth. This gives more happiness. This gives plus one to modernization. This gives minus one to modernization. This one gives minus one happiness from modernization, though. Uh, and this gives plus two per turn to time growth. This one gives plus one. Interesting. So I'd want to go with this one regardless. Um, so yeah, that's funny. This one gets plus one happiness in this province, and you lose minus, or and it gives minus one happiness for modernization. So it basically gives nothing for happiness. This one just gives plus two. So it's a pretty big difference in happiness for the two. Um, I don't think I want to get a market regardless yet though, but definitely something for later. Right, so we have another slot open here. So I guess we can start working on the cannon range too. Or I should start saving up for the ironworks. I'm not going to make the cannons for a while yet anyway. So I'll probably do that. So what is this? This is a city next. And I might want to get this too. Because happiness will go down. It's currently zero. But once the spring ends. It's going to be uh, minus one. So I'll we'll have to make a unit or something. Okay. I'm also, I might want to make a few units. Just to send them over. as like Because we're going to lose some stuff. But I don't know. For now. I think we're alright. Uh, let's end the turn. They're most likely going to attack us, though. Because they feel like they have a stronger force than I do. And I think they'd be right in seeing, so there we go. Yeah, so it's about... It's a little more in their favor, but it's nearly even. Um, so yeah, they got two generals. One Yarikachi. We have the Yarikachi as well. Ours has experience. We have six Spear Levy, as opposed to their two. They have one Machlokachi. Actually, they have three down uh, here as well. Um... Uh, one Machlokachi, four line infantry, and two Levy Garrison infantry. So they're def they definitely have me on range, but we have them on melee. So we're just gonna have to hope that our melee will do enough. It's ba we're basically fielding a, um, a Shogunate army here <coughs> against their military army. Okay, not a whole lot of trees to cover behind. But we do have a bit of a yield advantage, which is good. And their line infantry, I mean... I don't know how fast they shoot in this game, but they might get a volley or two off, but it's probably not going to be too bad. We can run our cavalry around. They only have a few infantry units. We have more cav than them, so we can take down their generals with our cav if necessary. And we should be able to take care of their range units with our cav as well, if, if we can uh, manage to do that. Of course, they might just start shooting at my cav, and then I'll lose three of my generals, which would be pretty terrible, but I guess we'll find out. Like I said, it's not a legendary yet, it's just learning, so it shouldn't be it too tough. possible to call in fire support from a nearby fleet, you can issue a bombardment order with a naval yeah, fire whatever, I know that. I know what's going on here. Okay, interesting battle map. I like that they're different from the last game. So one thing to keep in mind is ranged units, uh, gun units particularly, don't, I have to have line of sight. If I have a unit right here, 
Uh, sorry, I should use a different unit to make it more clear. If I have a spear unit right here, then the enemy standing right here won't be able to shoot him. The enemy standing right here won't be able to shoot him. They'd have to be standing right here, basically, because they have to have line of sight. So what I could do is just set up, basically, so that they can't shoot me for the longest time. And then I run in there. It does give them a heal advantage. Um, but what I could do is I could wait until they get, like, over here, and then I'll start sprinting over the hill. I think that's not a bad idea at all. Um, I'd have to find the right place to do that, though. And if it doesn't work out, then basically I'm at a massive disadvantage, because then I've got a hill disadvantage. Because they could just, like, run around and say, go this way. But then I suppose we can do the same thing here. Um, so I'll place my men like that. I do have two range units, so I'll just place them at the front. I'm going to start shooting at them. I guess you'd want them to be as long as possible. Sort of the point. We don't have any abilities yet, it seems. Then we have a Yari Kachi, but we'll leave him. Can we hide here? No. We'll leave him behind as well. And then we have a general. So I'll leave one general behind the main general. And then I'll have two generals on the flank, which I will attack the f uh, on the flanks with. We are ready to defend, sir! Okay, so we do have naval bombardment, so if we're lucky we'll be able to use them a little bit before the unit or the army arrives and we're gonna start shooting them. Okay, the way they're set up, like they're moving this way. They might be going for these generals. I'll leave them at the rear now for, for now actually. But I think this is gonna be working well, because there's no way they're gonna be able to shoot at me. Obviously if I leave these two units here they'll get shot up. But I might just like shoot once and then run away or something. Unless they have those cav running for me. But uh, anyway, we haven't really had a look at the units yet, so let's do that. So these are our spear levy units. Units look so much better in this game than Attila as well. It's just crazy. The detail on these units is crazy. So here we got our general. That's him right there, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. He's the one without any armor on. Smart. It's a smart move. They won't, they'll they never expect it to be you. Because, you know, the general would wear armor, right? This is our Yari Kachi. So it's basically like a Yari Samurai. I think they do look a little bit different from the regular Samurai unit, though. So that's good. They uh, at least didn't go all cheapskate. And just did whatever. This is the line infantry. They look pretty badass. And they got the shit levy ones. Uh, right here. You can definitely notice they're not as good. I haven't actually looked at the stats yet. They have both got 125 range. Okay. Oh man, the experience they were getting from sitting... Actually, that... Yeah, some of them got a ton already. Like, these guys are already ranked up. These guys started with two, but still. Yeah, that experience they get is super good. Okay, so... Our naval support is less than a minute away from being done. I seem to remember I liked doing area as well. I don't know about sitting here, but yeah, like I said, I'll probably just do one shot and then run away. See, the thing is, they could just charge me with their calf now and probably fuck me up. That's one thing I'm just not sure about in this, uh, in this game. Okay, so we should be able to fire and then just run back behind the line. Fire again from here, maybe, and then run back again. We got our naval support in 20 seconds. Might be able to shoot just before they get to us. Okay, here we go. I think I heard charging. Oh, yeah, we're getting shot. Alright, I think I heard a cav running up as well. So, how about we use our. Spear levy. If we sit right here, we I think they won't be able to shoot us either. Oh, we got our naval support, right. So we want to shoot that around there, I think. It does take a little bit. I might have actually been too late. I think they might get their charge off on me. Just about. Yeah, they got few of these men keep running out but look how close we are to them already 
Okay, the bombardment should be coming in in a second as well. Just got my Kachi in there too. Yeah, it's too far behind, so that was pointless basically. Okay, with these guys. Right. And then we got our generals. Start. Actually, let's get one of you over here. And the other one's over here. Okay. Yeah, we catch you to get in there. Hey, that's good. And these men over here need some help. Okay, so we shouldn't over here is having some trouble, but we should be able to deal with that soon. And we're now going to start charging the rear. Okay, we lost the unit here, and that means they freed up those those men. They had half of the units left as well. Oh crap. Charge these men in the rear. Okay, these generals need to get a little closer. We need to get behind as well. Okay, over here we're doing good. General, get another charge in there. Your general is under attack. I'm sure he is, but he's fine. Okay, yeah, we need to get over here and start charging these men in the rear. Once that happens, we'll be good to go. There's a Yai Kachi unit in there now. The General's unit in there, enemy general. I'd rather not really get into combat with him. Unless I've got a spear unit in there too. Okay, we've broken him. Let's get the generals out of there again. Where's my main general? Oh, he's getting wrecked over here by guns. Let's get in there. Alright, seem to have broken through most of the lines. Lost a fair amount of men, but looks like we've done it. This is actually a pretty big question for me. This could have like been the end of the campaign right away, but I uh, seem to know what I'm doing somewhat. <laughs> okay, we killed one of the generals. They did come out though, so that means they're going to be alive still. Your victory is close, sir. Yeah, it, 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 it was a little close, but you know. Okay, so let's try this a little bit better. I'm gonna do it right there. These guys are running though, so I'm probably gonna miss again and kill all my own units. I probably shouldn't have done this. But I might hit a few of these men. I'm gonna have you guys stop following them in a second. And you're gonna run that way first. I think we might actually hit them here. Stop running. Are they gonna come in at some point? I know it takes a minute, but there you go. Yeah, the first one was really late, but it's just we, we, I didn't know exactly how long it took. There you go. That was a cool, good hit right there. Okay, I think that's it. So now we know it takes a little bit. I should probably time it, and then I can actually sort of guess. Oh my god, there's a lot of shit that gets away right there. Oh crap, they're already at the side as well. The men tire, sir. They require rest. Oh, fucking stop moving then. But yeah, that was a pretty good victory. We lost these three units, they're pretty low. The rest is pretty fine, actually. Oh, actually, just get over there. Kill some of those men if you can. Yeah, they're gonna have a lot that gets away, sadly. What's this over here? Oh, hello. Might be able to get a few of those. Probably not. Nope. Alright, well, <clears throat> our first victory is a close victory. Like I said, I am completely unexperienced with how the battles work in this game. We had a heal disadvantage, uh, but it meant not getting shot at, so I think that's worth it in the end. Um, it just took a little bit too long to get my generals over there. Like I said, completely unexperienced with the battle, so... Also, I was a little bit worried for my generals for a minute there, because they got into combat with his general, uh, his had a heal advantage, and mine was already a little bit down. So, like, they already lost a few men, so that could have been dangerous, but it worked out because the entire army starts shattering. And we killed one of the enemy generals early on. I think that actually was like unintentional, but good bait. So we lost 761 men, they lost 1659. I think on legendary, I maybe wouldn't have won this. I think the units shattered would have been more of an issue. They would have shattered earlier or something. But uh, like I said, this is why I'm doing a, a hard campaign first, to get a little bit of experience. Experience.
Now, I have to see if I can still auto-resolve that battle without losing anyone. Otherwise, I might just take out these three units. Oh, I can't actually move them out. That is impossible, my lord. Hmm, interesting. So I guess my I'll have to... I mean, can I merge them? No Alright, so I'll lose one unit, I'll make a new one. Should be able to auto sword this without losing anyone. Yep. Alright, oh right, yeah, that's one thing I remember from this, is the battle meter is completely off like crazy. Makes no sense in some cases anyway, not all. Alright, so we've already got a pretty decent experienced army. General increase to rank 2, that's good. And uh, we'll take that town. Okay, so we got uh, spreading of Imperialism. We hurt these things. I think we hurt the town with the ships actually, but hey, what are you gonna do? Um, so I'll probably... Oh wait, they do have a port here. Oh, never mind. My bad. Speaking of which, I guess you guys can go sit in that said port. I don't know why, but you can do it anyway. And I think, oh, this is a tea plantation, by the way. Oh, cool, so that's like bills of tea and stuff, which will probably increase our income. Yeah, our income, uh, or our trade income, but our income went up quite a bit. Tea. Clan destroyed, province captured, clan encountered. The Oka. Let's see if the Oka want to trade before I head off. So, they can trade. They're hostile towards me. Speak. 800, yeah, I don't think so, mate. How about the, uh, I marry your I daughter? I do not wish to listen to you. But politics makes for strange and sometimes unwelcome encounter. 290 for his daughter. I, I don't care about enough. I'll just kill you and your daughter. That's how much I care about her. I hate her. She broke my heart. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it there. This is the first episode of my first Fall of the Samurai campaign. Technically second if you count the uh, Cobb one I did with um, Ptolemy. But that one never finished. So... I'm here to rectify that mistake. Well, it wasn't really a mistake, but um, yeah. So next time we'll be learning more on Total War: Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai, longest title in the history of uh, mankind. So I'm probably gonna call this uh, let's play like Total War: Shogun 2 FOTS, like short for Fall of the Samurai. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, um, so thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I shall see you then. Until then, goodbye.